My name is Catherine, Catherine Hayes, and I work with Frederick Lysicek as part of the uh, uh, Proteome Informatics Group uh, in SIB in Geneva. And I'm going to talk about uh, just a little bit about how we make sense of glycan protein-protein uh, interactions, glycan-mediated protein-protein interactions. So first of all, I just want to introduce the Glyspace Alliance. If you were at the workshop on Sunday, you probably heard a little bit about this already. Um, and so we are part of this initiative. It's an alliance of three of the main kind of portals for glycosylation data. Uh, us based in Geneva, Glygen based in America, from uh, Raja and Mike are in the audience, and Glycosmos in Japan. And that's uh, the project of Kyoko who unfortunately had to leave this morning. So each of these resources came together and it's a collaboration to try and um, make sure that there's a collaboration between the groups. We don't duplicate the data um, and also that we ensure integrity of all of this glycan-based data that we have in each of these resources. So each of the resources has their own strengths. For example, in Glygen, there's loads of kind of DNA and gene data, which is readily accessible. Uh, Glycosmos has a lot of pathway information. Uh, they also provide Glytucan repository, which provides unique IDs for glycan structures. Um, and then ourselves, we have Glyconnect and Unilectin, which are, uh, Glyconnect is about glyc glyc glycoproteins, which are proteins that actually have glycosylation on them, and glycan binding proteins, which recognize some motifs on this glycosylation. And so all the resources provide some kind of search or filter feature at different levels of granularity. Um, and we all try to use global identifiers. So as I mentioned already, glytucan IDs for glycan structures. And when I say structures, I mean topological structures as opposed to 3D. Um, and where possible, we use KEBI if we have a fully identified structure. For the proteins, we have Uniprot accessions, PDBs, and also Nexprot. And then other identifiers such as disease ontology and taxonomy IDs. And so all of these go towards making our data fair and our resources fair. What I want to just touch on is how we make these resources interoperable. And for me, my kind of speciality is using RDF to do this. So I mentioned we have Glyconnect and Unilectin. And Glyconnect is glycoproteins. Unilectin is glycan binding proteins. And we realized that in-house, first of all, we would like to be able to link these. And the way to link them is to understand the glycan part on the glycan protein that is displayed and the part, the glycan part that is recognized on the other side. To do this, you need to have not only have identifiers for the glycans, but be able to recognize the little motif that's in the glycan that is presented and recognized. And so we needed some kind of um, substructure search. And so we developed this uh, ontology model to describe glycans, and it kind of removes itself from the the, the nitty-gritty, if you like, because we do have string formats for glycans, but they're quite difficult to parse in terms of substructure searching. And so I'm not going to go into this very much. It's very um, technical, but this is the, the general model. And this allows us to describe the glycans, but also to do substructure searching. And uh, we applied it to our own set of glycans. We have uh, 5,600 in Glyconnect. So the next step was to actually uh, kind of test it on larger sets. So along with Kyoko, we took an in-house version of their Glytucan repository. And so we now have a, an in-house version of this with 71,000 glycans that are described in this RDF model. Um, and this also allowed us both, both Glyto uh, Glycosmos, I should say, so Glytucan is the repository, Glycosmos is the portal. Glycosmos and Glyconnect, we both have search facilities based on this model. So the Glyconnect one is GlycoQL, uh, Glycosmos, you can go to their Glycan search. Um, and just also, I just want to mention that this is ongoing work because we don't currently cover Glycan structures with repeating units such as uh, GAGs. And so two of the main advantages, one, uh, 
we have the substructure search available in both places. And the second one is the use of federated queries. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, <clears throat> we can do federated queries through the use of these IRIs or these identifiers that we use in our resources. So just a quick example of how this was applied. We have a COVID data set as part of Bly Connect, as everybody has, I guess, after the last few years. And we have a number of different, uh, this is just a snapshot of the, of the data set. Um, and across that we cover, uh, I think there's over 200 glycans that were found from different studies on the spike protein of COVID. So using the RDF model and the substructure search, we generated these patterns up here. And what these represent are kind of um, <clears throat> types of glycans that you can find, N-linked glycans, um, to, be predict to be precise. And I was able to group the types of glycans that are found on the COVID protein. But what was really nice was that we were, I was able to go to, using a federated query, go to Uniprot, identify the sites, the glycosylation, glycosylation sites, that are common between Uniprot and Glyconnect, and actually profile each of the sites with the types of glycans that are found on them. That's what you see here. And just to point out as well that Uniprot also has some kind of site assignments. They're given on top here. We were able to align some of them. They're the same, but some of them, <coughs> so for example, this one here, were a little bit different. Um, so that's a real general overview of what I do. And thank you, and questions. Thank you. Do you have a question? Henning? Did you use the um, first validate whether the sequence in the different resources, the underlying sequence, was actually the same? Did you use the Uniprot checksums or so? Because that's sort of um, only then you can compare the positioning. Um, well, we, we uh, they were all actually the same. When I say different proteins here, I actually just mean from different papers. And so it was actually... I think most of them were recombinant. So it was the same Uniprot ID as such um, that we were looking at in that particular case. Does that? Kind of, we can yeah, yeah. discuss later, yeah. okay. Thank you, Catherine. We just had time for, oh, okay, go ahead, come on. Thank you, just for the short, a quick question. So yeah. in the Protein-protein interaction, is there any records like how strongly they're bound each other or just either bound, yes or no? Oh, just, it, I mean, we just have two resources, so if, if that's you're talking about the unilectin. It's just, with the lectins, it's just whether they, um, well, with the work that I do, it's whether they recognize or not. I don't really take into account the, the strength at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again, Catherine. No problem. Thank you.